Erica Dawson is the author of two collections of poetry, Big Eyed Afraid and The Small Blades Hurt. Her poems have appeared in two editions of Best American Poetry, Harvard Review, Virginia Quarterly Review, and other journals and anthologies. She is an assistant professor of English and writing at the University of Tampa, where she also directs the Low Residency MFA, which is the Low Residency MFA I attended, by the way, in case you didn't catch the theme here. Um, the fact that she has read at Functionally Literate more than any other author should communicate our appreciation of her. Please welcome Erica Dawson. Thank you, Jared, for reading the bio that I wrote. Um, <laughs> At first, I sent him the super pretentious version where it was like she went to school here, and then I realized nobody gives a fuck about that. Um, Jared and Ryan, I don't know why you're so nice to me. And there are so many people here right now who have been kind to me. Orlando is like my home away from home, and I really, really appreciate that. Uh, and I'm also very conscious of the fact that I did a functionally literate reading 54 weeks ago. So I'm trying my best not to repeat poems, but I'm gonna do that once. Uh, so I apologize for that. And I just have to give a shout out to my former students and current students who came all the way up here to see me. So thank you. And I, I couldn't be more thrilled to be the poetry meat in the middle of this man sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so first, a little true story. Um, so I, when I lived in Cincinnati, I went to the mall to try to take a break from being a grad student and I would buy too much shit. But one day I was there and uh, I'm walking around and the singer Al Green, right? Al Green? All right. Uh, he's, he's singing around me somehow. And I'm, I'm looking all around. I'm like, where the fuck is Al Green? And, and he's coming out of a bush. Um, liter true story. Uh, so when something like that happens, you have to write a poem about it. Uh, and the kind of fake shrubbery he was coming out of uh, was the devil's walking stick. So the poem is called Speakers in the Devil's Walking Stick. I need a piece of chicken. Al Green is in the bush. Inside the mall, he's stricken me up. He's in the bush. Outside the limited, Al Green is in the bush. I heard him listen. Did you hear the intro? Shh. You hear the, I'm so tired of being alone. Wait, there it goes. It's wired on cue, a hard yeah, rhythmic and blue. Al Green is in the bush. I want to dance a Balanchine ballet. He's nonchalant. He's attitude. He's smooth outside, but limited, funky. I'll let him soothe me like an invalid who's got her legs back to life because Al Green is in the bush like Mac the Knife, ready to cut the thin world's rug and turn it loose outside the limited and down from Charlotte Russe, where every gothed out kid smelling of Kush can prove his mama right and sing, won't you help me pop, lock, and move so cool with that devil bellowing. Listen, Al Green is in the house. He's in the fizz of fountain drinks, the bin of half-off thongs. His voice is perfect. He's in the devil's walking stick and on the mannequin who suddenly craves dick because the mall is all possessed. Each potted plant croons soul like it's a tall black man who will enchant the naysayers all shaking their heads, saying they're always dancing. But soon, they're making their moves through tiled hallways, too saying my feet can't fail me now since sweet James Brown can slide right in. All tail feathers, swaying, get down, go to the bridge, stop, push. This beat is like blackmail. Al Green is in the bush, and there's a sidewalk sale. Sometimes stuff just happens and you have to write it down. Uh... So, you know the Wallace Stevens poem, 13 Ways of Looking at a Blackbird? Yeah, so 
That was Wallace Stevens, and this is me. Uh, 13 ways of looking at black. My grandfather called every white man Mr. Charlie. For cash, my grandmother mopped floors at Michigan State. Once, a librarian took the book Little Black Sambo high off the shelf and gave it to my mother as a child. I searched for Sambo on Amazon and got a hit for MMA submission holds. One time, I told my father he was peach, more like my neighbor, Leah, and less like me. I told my mother, yeah, you're way too black, and said you'll never be a lady. Nah. Sometimes, I play iron and wine when I can't sleep. I call my feet brown-topped, then cream, mulatto. Trust me. I'll never use the phrase, the N-word, because I'll say nigger because I can. When I finally saw Roots, I recognized the guy playing the part of Chicken George as Jesus from Jesus Christ Superstar. I never really understand Spike Lee. For reparations, I would like a slave. And no, I do not want any watermelon. It's okay, you can laugh. <laughs> this next one's called Paramore. She's kept and loves it. How we say a man keeps a mistress instead of has a mistress. Because keep means possession, hold, and grip. Position. She loves that he left in a saran tonight, a fine rain, and not a single cloud that the light bulb died in the lamp beside her bed, still dying, that it buzzes as an insect does, the flashing filament, the thorax, shell, the exoskeleton. She loves the dog that's hollering outside, how it could be where she stood earlier, next to a bird that must have hit the ground like a bare back door, such aimless force, its head sits perpendicular to its broad chest. The dog must have its hungry face in it. She thinks of what it must be like to bark and grumble in your throat, to make a sound of such alarm for both pleasure and pain, people stand back. She hopes to make a noise next time he comes over in the afternoon on a day warm enough for open windows when somebody will hear her and stop and think she's got a mother tongue of glossolalia because the devil's got up in her something fierce. Love poem after learning hair is dead skin. I want to pin you down so I can drift over your shoulders. I want to say your dermis is so pretty. So you'll say never wear a do-rag and grow it out and go natural. Because this is the moment when we refurbish ourselves, rising and falling dust and dander mites. We need a black light and a microscope because I want to see you shed. I want your sheath. So I don't do disclaimers, uh, and I don't let my students do them either, so sorry, guys. Uh, but um, this poem is super new, and I really honestly don't know why I'm reading it to you. Uh, and it's also a bad idea because my amazing friend Jeff Parker is the man who invited me to teach at the Disquiet International Literary Program last year, uh, which was an amazing experience with one awful evening. Um, we were at a club after we had been to a few bars, and uh, there was a group of men uh, and a bit, of a, a bit of an incident around me. So I decided to attempt to write about it. So this is called Woman. Girl, you got to have your way with you in Lisbon. Go hit Bairro Alto, 
just one bar so much in three days' time, you and your friends have got no choice. You've got to call it headquarters. Drink kettle one, chase it with beer. Let some guy trying to hawk is cheap, is good, hashish linger next to you because good Lord he fine the way strangers always look good because you've never looked at them before. When someone says they got a stripper at the Viking club, you better chant it loud. Fabiana, her name even louder now is Fabiana. You better dance off your left shoe. You better wish that she would straddle you. You better grab on a friend's belt loop to get him closer, closer, and even closer. And you better see that there are hell's angels in Portugal, see them coming and the one approaching you, pushing up on you, his mouth on you, his crew circled around you, on your breast, his hands, your broken dress gone limp, one nipple hard and the air turned cold and suddenly a cab. And while you're in the cab counting your change, call it your fault and believe you did. At your hotel, don't wash your face. Instead, put on more makeup just to break your face to pigments, cherry as that part of the mouth nobody ever sees. Tomorrow, find a church of saint someone the divine and leave behind your thumb in a Bible hefting so much weight it needs a pedestal and the pages sigh, testifying whenever someone closes it. And tomorrow, be last night when you cord the moon listing for you, turning for you, losing its spot to you as you carved out its side and a month of Sundays passed in that one last second when you demanded hollow. Say yes. And finally, before we get to the real show... This is called Black Woman. Find Kirsten, your old American girl, and bind her with butcher's twine. Say it's her fault that all black dolls were ugly, and you wished your hair would fall like that. Then put her in the trunk and sit on it, smoke swishers and stomp them out. Swing by the Metro Mart to get some Chester fried chicken and ask the guy, yo, where the 40s at? So he can tell you how the law won't give you more than 36 and you can say, well, fuck the man. Because today you're feeling petulant and someone cat called you with, girl, you got some fat steak when your ass is grown and he was black and that's as bad as when the white guy thought it fine to say he likes it native. Feel sated. Keep it hood and ride dirty. Say, officer, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to have to play it louder now. Go on and claim your, go on and claim your stake. Because if you want harder, you should have to ask for it by name. Thank you. Thank you.